Welcome to Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Los Angeles today and joined by Mike Fuhr. He's the elected city attorney in the city of Los Angeles. Um, I would not have expected that the city attorney would need to look at questions of immigration, but those are before you as a result of the new administration. I want to start with uh, the rumors that have been percolating that immigration and customs enforcement agents have been telling individuals in the city of Los Angeles that they're police officers. Right. Why is that of concern to you? Well, it's a tremendous concern because for 40 years, LAPD has taken a tremendous amount of effort to engender trust among immigrant communities. Why? Because we are all safer when everyone feels comfortable coming forward as a witness or a victim of crime, reporting it and cooperating with law enforcement. Uh, and LAPD has a longstanding policy of not asking about immigration status when it engages with someone. So to have ICE police is to undermine four decades worth of hard work. So I'm very concerned because all of us suffer when anyone feels uncomfortable saying, hey, that person victimized me because that person is going to get off if no one comes forward to report their crime. Recently, the police chief of Los Angeles issued some statistics in connection with reporting by Latinos. What Charlie Beck said is he compared March 2017 right. to March 2016. And he said sexual assault complaints were down by Latinos 25% when compared to non-Latinos down 3%. Similarly, spousal abuse complaints were down by Latinos almost 10 yeah. percent, whereas non-Latinos down about 4 percent. It's one month in time, right. but what do you make of those early statistics? It's a very disturbing trend, and it hits at the heart of the work of my office. We prosecute domestic violence cases, right. for example, um, and the most important irony of people failing to report because they're concerned about immigration status is that they have the capacity to get temporary legal status in this country through what's called a right. U visa right. if they come forward and in fact have been abused. Uh, they don't have that ability if they don't come forward. Uh, I'm very concerned about that. I'm very concerned about ICE enforcement in and around courthouses. And let's talk about that. Yes. Because I was, I got to tell you, what a stunning development when the chief of the California right. Supreme Court goes public. I mean, you don't hear Supreme Court justices saying anything to right. the media. But she went public and said that it was her view that ICE agents, I believe she used the word stalking, right. were stalking courthouses in an effort to find the undocumented. Well, That's stalking. I found those reports of enforcement in and around courthouses extremely damaging to public safety for some of the same reasons I'm concerned about ICE misrepresenting itself as police here in Los Angeles. It, the, the courthouse enforcement deters victims and witnesses of crime from coming forward to court, let alone not pursuing any civil rights they have. And, and let me just say, Brad, you know, I, I had an opportunity, you know, I've spoken with the Chief Justice about this, and what you haven't mentioned yet is as this inf unfolded, Jeff Sessions and Secretary Kelly mm -hmm. uh, responded to the Chief Justice by saying in a very dismissive way, don't talk to us, talk to your governor, talk to your state legislators about their policies. Well, I will share with you, immediately thereafter, I worked with our district attorney, Jackie Lacey, we reached out to prosecutors throughout the state, and almost immediately a dozen of us sent a letter back to right. Sessions and Kelly saying, you have it wrong, and she has it right. Our Chief Justice understands the impact on public safety on our streets better than you do. Enforcement in and around courthouses is going to have a chilling effect that has effect, uh, adversely affects every one of us when it comes to our safety. What they would say is that as a result of the approach California is taking by preventing ICE to work in jails or be near the jails, again, events are moving quickly, that they need to be able to somehow find undocumented somewhere. So they would say, well, okay, let us in the jails and we won't go to courthouses. We won't go to schools, like I guess was done recently by a father who was dropped off. He was dropping off his daughter at Lincoln Heights and was picked up a few blocks away. How would you respond to that? Baloney is what I would say, because here's where the action is. 
all of us want to assure that dangerous criminals who are here unlawfully don't stay in this country. That's not the point. The point is that there are some very significant court decisions that prevent the police from engaging right. in the kind of collaboration that this administration is insisting and on. And I want to talk about that. You're talking about the case out of Oregon, right. which said that once someone's sentence is over, right. you cannot hold them. You need to release them because what was happening is jails were holding them for a day or two before right. ICE got there. So my question is, if that's the case, why not tell ICE they're going to be released on this date, get here before this date? Well, again, LAPD is an example of a public safety organization that communicates with authorities. Right. We convey information about fingerprints and identities that people are being held. If ICE wants to have LAPD hold someone longer than otherwise would they be allowed by law, that. they can go to a court and get an order. But it, but and, I, and, that's, and that's LAPD's policy. Is I, as long as there's that judicial imprimatur to that order, then fine. But short of that, Federal court cases have said that we would violate the civil rights of the person being detained and subject city taxpayers to paying money that ought to be devoted to hiring more police officers to a lawsuit. Right. Look, you are part of the city of Los Angeles, which right. really doesn't operate jail. I mean, I guess... That's right. The sheriff it's, operates it's the jails. Sheriff. The LAPD yeah. doesn't it, do it's that. It's a county issue. Correct. So, but, but if we can just talk more broadly, right. why is it that there can't be better communication? So if ICE wants to pick up a violent felon, they don't show up after his release they show up before his release so as he's walking out they can take him ice has records of who is being held if they want to pick up a violent felon they have means of doing that already I and 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 so for me as you point out la doesn't operate the the jail system right. the sheriff does but nonetheless i want to be clear lapd's policy is both lawful and necessary from a taxpayer standpoint now this leads into another issue and that is, you might have seen that the Trump administration issued an executive order regarding so-called sanctuary cities. And at the core of that order is the question, well, how much cooperation must a city engage in to not be labeled a sanctuary city by the Trump administration? And here's the thing. They shot first and asked questions later. Mm -hmm. The administration issued that executive order threatening the funding of cities without ever defining right. what they mean by a sanctuary city. And so I have to tell you, I've seen... Uh, town halls, for example. Right. I remember I saw a town hall with uh, the minority leader, Nancy Pelosi, and it was clear that the questioner thought that sanctuary city meant that you kept criminals. Right. That, that's not what sanctuary city well, means. Exactly. See, and this is the point. There is this perception that is being fueled by the administration mm -hmm. that somehow jurisdictions around the nation are harboring dangerous criminals. I made very clear at the beginning of this interview, it's imperative that we get dangerous criminals behind bars if they are residents of this country or out of this country if right. they immigrated here unlawfully. But, but I, no one disagrees about that. But I think it's important if you are, metaphorically speaking, an advocate of what we know is the sanctuary movement, right. The message needs to be spoken clearly because right. there's tremendous confusion on what sanctuary status means. Safe zones, right. safe harbor, and so I think Americans are yeah. confused. Well, it's an undefined term. I mean, and, and here in Los Angeles, the labels, because it's undefined, don't mean very much. The actions are what matters. Mm -hmm. LAPD cooperates with the federal government when appropriate, but as we've described, won't violate the civil rights of someone. It'll mean that city taxpayers pay money okay. out unlawfully. We, do other, uh, we have other steps that involve cooperation with the federal right. government, but at some point, it's also true, we have to value the immigrant communities that ensure economic vitality in the city. We'll have you back. He's Mike Fior, LA City Attorney. I'm Brad Pomerantz. It's Local Edition.